Hello. Hello. Um, I, I think, think I'm, I'm probably... probably <laughs> I think I've probably <laughs> just gone live. Hopefully you can... Um, hopefully you can see me okay, okay and hopefully, hopefully you can hear me okay. okay. Hopefully you can hear me okay, because thankfully today, I mean very usefully today, there's a guy with a huge piece of petrol-driven garden machinery right out the front of the house, <laughs> and he just started it up just as I was getting set up. He's gone around the corner a little bit now from the sound of things. So, <laughs> if you can hear a little buzzing and humming, it's not because my equipment is messed up. It's because there's... Going the next door's garden, doing his thing with his enormous petrol strainer. Um, <laughs> it looks like everyone can see me okay. I've got a slightly. Yeah. Hello, Jay, nice to see you. Hello, everybody. I've got a slightly strange situation today because I've got a new machine for streaming with. But it, it does mean that, that I can't quite see all of the comments at the same time. time. Um, hopefully I'll be able to sort that out now. Uh, so, so I think, I think you, you can see, see it just in the corner, the, the new machine is over here, here with the huge screen, screen, but it's still too far away for me to be able to read the comments. So. He's, <laughs> this guy's going to come right outside the window. Yeah, he's coming right outside the window. window. Yeah, Mate, you, you don't, don't have, have to, to do our garden. garden. We're, We're not, not going to hire you, okay? okay. Please, Please turn, turn off. Oh dear. He's, He's touting for business, business by doing a little bit of our garden as well. And <laughs> what he's managing to do is make me promise to myself that I would never hire him. And I've got one of those strings anyway. He's moving away. Hopefully the sound is not going to be too bad from here on. Listen. I'm, I'm going to switch, switch straight over onto, um, can you hear, can you hear the <gasps> He stopped. I think, I think he's finished. finished. I've got, got a monster, monster chip, chip on here, which is the only there, there so that, that I can focus, focus the, the camera. camera. So let me switch, switch onto the camera, camera and I can show you what I've got set up today. Here's the camera on the easel. By, By the, the way, way, having new, new, new equipment, equipment and everything means that I can, I can now hopefully be streaming, I should be streaming at higher quality. So, um, echoing. It's very strange. That sorted it. Hopefully that sorted it. Do let me know if I'm no longer echoing. I think I know what it was. If it's hopefully, if it's hopefully stopped. How bizarre, How bizarre to come, come into someone's stream and advertise your own. What, what a strange thing to do. Anyway, um, do, do let me know if the sound, sound is okay, okay now. Hopefully it should be, it should be working all right. Still coming. why wouldn't that be? Um, okay, so I'm just, just going to give me a minute to see if I can figure this out. Is that any better now? Has that sorted it out? That's very odd. I wonder what it could be. Still echoing. I don't have any, I can't quite figure out what could be picking it up. Should be all right now.
Don't think I have any other microphones in. I fixed it. <laughs> Great. I think I know what it was. Sorry about that. Um, because, of course, I can't hear the stream at the same time as I'm, um, as I'm talking, or, or I, will, I will mess it up. Great. Okay. Let me show you the reference photo. Now these roses are, um, um, I just took this picture. Uh, these roses came from out the front actually, I'm growing them in pots in the garden. And this variety is Litchfield, called Litchfield Angel. Um, oh, he's got a new machine out now. I was hoping he was gonna stop for a bit, but he's got himself a new machine. So let's make this smaller. I just wanted to show you it like the full size. Um, and then I'll bring the pallet up. You can see what I've got going on there. At the moment, not very much. Hopefully we can see both. Yeah, that looks good. These are the brushes that I used yesterday. Should be nice and dry now. Yesterday was um, a stream for Threads, my online workshop program, um, where I do kind of the same stuff that I do on these streams, but a little bit more around specific um, specific skills. So we did, um, I'll show you the study I did yesterday. We did a value study yesterday. Um, and this was all about modeling form. So it's about light and shadow, um, and then half tones in the lights, and then reflected light in the shadow, and then some edge handling. I love doing um, value studies of garlic, lots of fun. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do today, I've got some oil out already, is I've got a fairly large-ish panel. Let me tell you how big this panel is. It's an ampersand panel, and I haven't oil primed this one, but I have sanded it down. So it's a little bit, it's 12 by, 12 by 9. It's a little bit um, smoother. I've taken some of the kind of the tooth that they put on it off a little bit. Let's get some oil on the panel first. So we had a nice paint along last night. What I do is I supply a photo, obviously a bit more ahead of time than when I'm just doing a, an informal stream like this. Um, and the materials list, and then people can paint along. Had some great studies done last night. Whereas this is, these streams are really, this is just what I would be doing in the studio anyway. I'm, this is just what I'm painting today. Uh, and. Uh, it's a bit more kind of like, come what may, kids come in <laughs> wanting stuff. So this is just linseed oil, okay? This is what they're called painting into a couch. Now, I don't have any paint out yet, so. I'm gonna put out some lead, uh, sorry, not lead white, titanium white first. Um, I probably shouldn't actually be painting today because I'm extremely tired, I must admit. Um, I think partly because I've just been setting up all of this new machinery and there was a bit more tech to learn. Um, and just generally probably trying to do a little bit too much as usual. So today may well just be a study. Um, it might go through to a finished painting, but I'm not going to... I'm not putting any pressure on myself to try and make anything in particular today. I'm just going to focus on the process. Um, try and get things right in the early stages and then see how I go. And it's not going to break my heart if this one doesn't become a finished painting. I'm working bigger because I've got two flowers and they're both complex. Um, <clears throat> and what I don't want to do is try to paint these on a small panel and then find that I struggle to show the structure and the form. Which can often happen. It's 
Studio Cat is doing very well, thank you, Daphne. He's uh, he's got he was he had what, what I thought might have been a kind of a seizure type of thing. Now, he's very old now. He's like in human years. He's about ninety, um, but it wasn't that. All it was was he's got uh, he's had a bad flea problem for a while. I've been treating it with something that isn't really good enough, uh, and um, poor little fella is the fleas have been getting worse and worse. I'm not even sure I put out what I normally use there. Was that raw umber? I hope it was. Yes, it was raw umber. I'm a bit of a jangle today as well. I feel like I've, I've learned so much tech in such a short time about the colour spaces and video. You don't want to know about it. Seriously, it's like it's, it's desperately tedious. Um, but I'm hoping that it's going to mean... Uh, oh, that reminds me, there's something I did mean to set on the camera. Um, it's going to mean, as I gradually learn more about this stuff, that I will be able to do better and better quality streams. Which is what I'm always kind of aiming towards. Just bringing up the gain a little bit on the cameras. The light is a little bit... Uh, it's, it's, it's nice light for painting today. It's light, but it's overcast, which is generally kind of what I like for painting. I'm just deciding as I go along, really, what, as I'm mixing, what I want to tone the panel with today. Um, not going too dark. So this is mostly raw umber and white with a little bit of ivory black as well. Um, I'm just going to put this on and then wipe the majority of it off. Well, not the majority, but a good amount of it so that I don't have too much oil on the panel. So I want the oil on there because it's going to help me paint more expressively, I think, and, and, um, and also more quickly. But I don't want so much um, that it's, it's too slick and isn't a good surface. I like it as well doing it this way because it adds some texture to the panel straight away. And especially this one because I, it doesn't have the oil primer on it. It's quite, um, it's very smooth in fact. So it just puts a little bit of texture on and it breaks that kind of white, that horrible white panel white surface like yawning at you <laughs> great yawning um, vacuum there now I've already started painting so I don't have to worry about it uh, so I'm gonna I want to think about first before I think about laying in those roses and drawing them out at all accurately I want to think about thank you yeah Ginia if I if I, I will stop if I do feel like it's a bit too much today just um, you know I would be painting anyway so I may as well turn the cameras on and stream it just it's just it may well be that today I uh, you know, I find if I'm not on top of things and I'm not focused, sometimes things turn out well, but like as not, I, I run into difficulties. But we'll see how we go. If the light holds and the sun doesn't come out, I might be able to go for quite a while. And the roses are indescribably beautiful. <laughs> they really are. Uh, so I'm just thinking about where the panel I would like them to be. Incidentally, on the photo, you can see the little chopping board that they're on. I'm not going to paint the division between chopping board. It's just there to add. I just wanted that slightly darker value there and a bit more and a little bit of colour. But it, well, I won't actually be painting that. Um, the edge of the chopping board, I don't think. I think I want them bigger in the painting than they are. But I've got to watch than they are in the photo, but I've got to watch the width. 
I'll probably want one of the roses up around here. Let's get right off to the side. Can you hear the garden machinery, by the way? Is it coming out on the mic? I have a, something called a gate, which cuts the, the mic when I'm not talking, so it may be that it's, um, it's enough to keep it quiet. So I need to think about... There's this leaf over here, which I kind of want to keep in the painting. It lines up towards the bottom of this rose. More than double the width of the rose over to that leaf. I don't have to paint things exactly as they are. You know, I can, I can move the positions of things around a little bit. Just trying to think about the... There's an interesting kind of... A, you see, this, what I like about this composition is this, there's a sweep of the leaves that go from the top of this rose out to the edge of this leaf, this leaf that points out on the left. And then you can draw a line down from there, pretty much. That lines up with towards the bottom of this rose, and you can draw a line down from there, which kind of gives you the... The next row is here. I always think when you put the first thing on the panel, it's really easy because you don't have to relate it to anything. Then as soon as something is on there, you have to think about relating things. It gets complicated. Like if you only have a dot, you, just, you can't make a mistake. As soon as you put another dot, then you've got relationships. And the bottom of the... I hmm, wasn't really expecting to do it that way. I think I've drastically shortened this width here. Um, and this rose is too big, probably. Bottom of the vase would be about there. I think I will paint the vase today. I may do. We'll see how we go. It's already kind of ending up in there. So this is like a shadow side of this rose is here. Oh, I'm glad you can't hear it. I'm finding it, the, the garden machinery deeply disturbing at the moment. Um, just trying to think. The actual shape overall is wider than it is high. So this is definitely wrong. Really, that leaf would be like off the edge. Maybe the leaf is going to go off the edge. Maybe the leaf is going to come out here. Uh, decisions. Decision time. So I would have leaf going off there. There would be a dark shape in the middle of that rose for these two leaves. You see, I want, mostly I want the roses to obviously to be the focus, but I'm just wondering if this might look a little bit odd. With the uh, 
that leaf off the side. I'm just standing back and trying to have a think about how I'm going to frame this. The roses have ended up, now that I've started laying them in, just doing it kind of, I suppose you could say sort of by feel. Um, they've ended up bigger in the panel than they are in, that, in the photo that I just put up on Facebook. So. I'm kind of trying to decide if I think that's going to work. I think I may need to do something with this, that leaf there that isn't quite the same as the subject. I guess we can... I like the position of the roses, so I guess we can try with this. line of that edge of this rose goes cuts through this one about there yeah goes over there and line up it's all right and then out to this leaf is going to be coming off here this is all going to be shadow Thinking about trying to arrange roughly light and dark shapes. Uh, so this is the cast shadow that comes in from the edge of the, the shadow box kind of thing. The background is almost the same value as the shadow side of the rose there. So there's the shadow side of that rose. These are not the values they're going to be. I'm just, I'm just trying to think it, think through the composition really at the beginning, so I can get an impression of there's the cast shadow of the bars. This is all going to be much lighter. Bars is going to be here. Dark leaves, and this will all be dark. Yeah, I, I think it might work like this. There's quite a lot of room at the top, but it kind of places the roses quite nicely. So we're in the middle of the panel, so we'll just see how that's going to go. I think. Um, work out. Doesn't look much like a painting at the moment. I know. I like to more and more these days I kind of feel my way into the composition at the beginning rather than you know I have done a lot in the past is worked with grids and put viewfinders up and then placed that like let me show you what I mean by viewfinder like one of these placed it over the subject and then moved it forward and back and around until I, I think I've got something I like um, and then drawn to the grid but I kind of have a feeling that that might cut out some possibilities when I do it that way, that I would be better off. This is too high. That would, you know, doing it more freely like this, it, it allows me to, I just feel like I come up with slightly different placement. All I'm thinking about really is placement at this point. And I think I come up with slightly different, a slightly different design for the picture if I do it this way than if I use a grid because I'm actually just dealing with the picture and, and not with reality, you know, and the composition is an abstract thing, really, I think. And this, doing it this way, I, personally, I find it a lot easier to just to be thinking in terms of shapes of light and dark. And um, 
not to get too wound up with uh, not not thinking about actual about things objects and how complicated these roses are and if i'm going to be able to paint them and you know <laughs> just trying to make it's easier to kind of see it more as an arrangement but i do want the in terms of the drawing i do want the relationships of the two roses to each other to be about right Because, you know, I set them up in a way that I thought was so. Um, I'm going to wait and see what happens with that. Leaf. And the other advantage of doing it this way is that it... Um, you end up with a really nice kind of a, it already has a nice feeling, it has a, a kind of a softness to it. And a like a little bit of poetry almost right from the start. a bit more black in there than I wanted I think but we'll see how we go Zoning out a bit here to try to focus on this part. Yeah, see they're over to the side, but if the leaves can balance it a little bit over here and then we've got this dark shape here. See how it works out. Hello Jane. Jane from Canvas. Canvas. Kansas, sorry. Yeah, Gary, yeah, sometimes, um, yeah, but I, I do this for a, a a deliberate reason because I, I deliberately don't want to be thinking too much about what what I find that sometimes I will end up doing is early on is I'll get I'll get a bit lost in trying to draw something out accurately and then I get you know it's happened to me so many times I get to the end of a painting and I look at what I've done and I think I totally should have positioned that differently <laughs> in the do you know what I mean in the in the in the panel it's like I could have come out with a much better result if I'd have um, spent a bit more time at the beginning thinking about where I wanted that all to sit. You know, so I tend to work, it's kind of more complicated in a way, I think, to work this way because you've got to, thinking about more than one thing at once, but in a lot of ways I, I kind of feel like it helps me with the initial sort of, yeah, see, that's going to be right back there. There's a little bit of dark leaf showing there. Um, I'm going to put a light note in where the lightest light is going to be just to give me a reference 
value-wise. The lightest part is definitely going to be here. It's not quite the, it's not going to be white, it's not going to be titanium white. There are greenish yellow, greenish yellow. There's also a very light white. Didn't mean to pick up that brush actually, never mind. I want to bring in some shadow colour in the background. I have a certain amount of freedom about this. We'll start laying out some more colours soon. This is Michael Harding Green Gold. And this is, um, if you've just popped in and you haven't seen me stream before, I, uh, I work very, very slowly and deliberately at the beginning because I think it's the most important. You know, a lot of these marks are going are gonna to show. I think it's the most important part of the painting. It's getting everything set up right at the beginning. So I've kind of, I've decided on, on, my, on my composition pretty much at this point. Now I'm thinking about mostly about values, but I'm going to be dealing with color at the same time. This is um this brush is um Winsor and Newton Eclipse. It's a watercolor brush. I'm thinking about the relationship between the lightest light and the darkest dark. This is pretty dark here. There's a, an interesting relationship here between the very light petal of the rose and um, background. Our darkest dark really is uh, is the leaves here. So. Let's get those in, and for those, I'm um, going to want. Now, this is Michael Harding Bright Yellow Lake. It, bright Yellow Lake, the pigment is PY3. It's a very green yellow, it's an arylide yellow. It's better than lemon yellow, personally, I think, in, in terms of a green yellow because it's much higher chroma. Uh, and. Um, Thalo green. This is actually Windsor and Newton. Windsor green. 
piano shade, I put way too much out, I only need the lightest touch. I want a dark green ivory black. Bring it up a little bit with this yellow and it will be a, a very yellowish green without a lot of chroma. If you want to this is a great a great combination of uh, tube colors for mixing greens. You can see it's it's kind of, hopefully you can see it's a slightly olivey. I want it to go more towards a blue green and add some chroma, and the best thing for that is this this thalo will work really well. So I'm looking for the darkest dark, which is those which is those leaves at the back there. They're going to be just here, right next to the rose. Now, trying to set up the value balance early on to make the roses look as lifelike as possible, you know. I also want it still more yellow than that. I want it a bit too blue. And I haven't, because I'm on my new machine, I haven't got my usual background music on, I'm afraid. No background music today. Sorry about that. I'll have to get that figured out. And I will try to get things like in, in pretty much the right place, even at this stage. And, you know, if there's anything that I can put in that I won't have to go back and touch later, then that's a, a bonus, you know. So immediately this goes in, I can see how, how far down in value the background has to go. It's a long, long way. I'm trying to find the top of the leaf. I think I'm too... Uh, blue green let's bring a bit more black and aralide yellow in and one of the things I think you need to be careful of is to is to end up looking at um, value relationships local value relationships it's a bad way to paint you know you you lose the overall um value balance if you try to paint that way you need to be painting values always with an eye to how they relate to the whole because if you focus in on one area of value and a small relationship between two values next to each other, you will generally make the difference between them too large. Partly because that's the way our visual systems work, um, and partly because um, I'm, I'm compressing down a much wider range of values in my subject into the, value, into the range I can reach with paint. So all of my values are going to be closer in my painting than they are in reality. There's no way around that. Dark. So the background value there is almost as low as uh, those leaves. So it's already, it's too light. So 
So it wants to be really just a little bit lighter than the leaves. So that the leaves still show. Just. Let's bring in, that's, uh, I don't, I'm feeling a low crown there. So this is the, like a, the dangerous part, like, I, you know, if I'm looking at this value here against this one here, if I ignore anything else, it's not too bad at this stage because there's not too much else in. I could easily lose that, I'll get something wrong in relation to the whole. leaves are too big. This is, um, this brush is a, a rosemary's, it's a synthetic eclipse, eclipse coma. I can get that lighter part of that leaf in there. There you go, in the light, these leaves, they still have some chroma. Uh, and the values are actually a lot, a lot lower and, and and closer than you'd think between the light and the shadow on a dark object like that. But they, um, the, the chroma drops a lot. So I think my background has to be the overall value scaled and I think that highlight of that leaf is about right. So that pretty much means that my background would have to drop a bit there, I think. The leaf is going to come off the edge probably.
sorry, I'm not uh, I want to get this blocked in. I'm not really doing a very good job of keeping up with the, the messages at the moment. Just give me a minute and I'll um, I'll try and catch up. So I'm going up, I'm, I'm mixing more ivory black and titanium white together here to get a, like a lower chroma gray. Near neutral as I go up into the, into the lighter part of the value range of the background on this side. So I'm trying to think mostly about values in the picture as a whole. And I suppose to an extent trying to cope create a kind of a, a bit of an atmosphere at the same time with the, the brush. Hello Rita and thank you. Virginia says I love this part. Yeah I mean this is um this is really, this is the part where all, the most important stuff happens. I mean, it, you want to be in playing with the details, but this is the bit that matters, like, I think, around here, this part of the painting. Because you can't, once you start doing, working, uh, modelling smaller forms and stuff like that, it's very difficult to go back and change any broad value statements, any broad value mistakes. You can't really do it. <clears throat> so you want to broadly you want to get the values right now so I, I'm trying to paint in a way that I'll get the values right how I want them and that and that they'll work but I'm also trying to do something with the with the the marks the brush marks to make a something interesting at this point does that make sense so it's like uh you know a lot of these brush marks I would like to, them to be able to stay I may, I may end up painting over a lot of it anyway. That does happen quite a lot later on. But um, you know, if I can get it something like like pretty close at this point, then that's that's uh, it's going to help me. And it's much easier to make adjustments at this stage that it, you know it would be very difficult to make adjustments later on. I can change things really easily at this point without a lot of extra work. I won't be able to do that later. So not so easily. And yeah, water. I don't know how you work with watercolor, Gary. Honestly, <laughs> it's like a. <laughs> I make too many mistakes, I think. Or I, I make too many, um, you know, too many adjustments as I go along just to be able to do that. I don't know how you do it. But you, my hat is off to you and anyone who works in watercolour. It's a little bit out there.
Hello, Linda. Linda from Oregon. Oh. Make the vase the subject. <laughs> no, it won't be. The roses are the subject. The vases, usually when I paint stuff like this, I will barely suggest the vase. Oh, hi, Kathy. Yeah, these are, aren't they gorgeous? These are Litchfield Angel. Pitchfield Angel Roses, they're the same as the one I did, I painted one the other day. Um, it ended up almost like a mandala kind of, like this one here, where I, I, a bit blown out where I painted the whole, just one rose in the, in the whole panel. Came out so, uh, the, the rose just was just so beautiful, I just didn't want to put anything in it. And this one, I think that the vases are going to be, won't be more than suggested. I'm thinking now about, I want to fill this, I want to have the environment established before I start thinking about, um, I've got the light, the light value of the, the, the light side of the roses is in, but I want to think very carefully about the shadows. So I'm thinking about this area of wood here. Um, kind of colour that is. Oh. I'm just getting my Monsel book out and knocking over large amounts of finished paintings in the process. See, I know, like looking at it, it's, it's, a, it's a yellow orange. It's, it's low. It's low chroma. You can see it in the, you know, in the, uh, in the reference photo that I've put up there. I'm not painting from that photo, I'm painting from the subject, but so the colours would be very, very, very slightly different. I just think just that bit of that leaf there. Value would come up a little bit to show it. So I just want to know what what colour it is like, and uh, the bit of wood. And this is going to really help me. So I'm going to hold that in front of it. The um, because I chose it because I like the colour, you know. So if I hold that in front of them the subject and just isolate that colour, I've got a much better chance of judging it. And that, you could argue that it doesn't matter if I get that exactly right or not. Um, but I would like to be close at least. And in terms of value, it's quite a lot lighter than this up here, but it's, it's obviously nowhere near as light as this. So, and it's probably, it's closer in value, it's closer to this value than that, than the light side of the rose. So I'm going to want it to be fairly low now. It's, it's, uh, it's bring out some yellow ochre. Not that one. This was an experiment. Michael Harding, French yellow ochre. I thought, That's a, that looks interesting. Let's try it. It's like painting with grit. I'm not blaming him. It's just, the, you know, whatever the pigment is. But, God, I, no, I, I will never use that paint.
I know I'm going to need to send that a little bit more orange or towards red than that. This is quinacridone rose. I just want a red. And I really want this to be um, at a low chroma because I don't want it to argue with the roses. The roses are very low chroma. And I, want, I don't want anything that's going to take away, make it more difficult to see the color of the shadows of the roses. So I want to be in the, in the right general area, hue-wise, and I, the value is crucial. I think I want the I think I want the chroma to be low, probably a bit lower than it really is. When I come to the roses, I'm going to want to get very close to the, the actual colours that are there, but it doesn't bother me quite so much for this, this bit of wood here, because um, and mostly because it could be any colour anyway. I'm not painting it as, I'm not trying to paint exactly that bit of wood, I just wanted a, something in there. So in value terms, that's what I've got in the background. It wants to be near that, a bit lighter, not too much. So that cast shadow there is actually going to be a much lower value than that. Cast shadow from the vase here. I want that to be suggested in there. Um, I think it needs to be darker.
Yeah, uh, Irene, uh, thanks. The, the lost edges in the atmosphere, that, a lot of that comes from working into an oil couch and then using flat synthetics. Most of it really comes from that. Um, and then what I do a lot is I'll take a dry brush like this um, or even softer like this um, and just pull uh, things around a little bit and you get these this incredible softness everything bleeds together you know and especially at the beginnings when I'm setting things up I like it to be like this like really soft and then you know when I'm, I'm confident that things are, are set up right and in the right place and where I want them to be um, then I'll start to go in and refine the painting a little bit but at this stage you know and then if I'm lucky I get to keep some of this a lot of it if I'm really lucky I'll get to keep it I'm definitely feeling dark over here because um, of this diagonal there is actually a dark area on the on the panel but mostly to do with this diagonal against this one. I, s I saw, I did an, uh, like an online course with a, uh, of a, a well-known painter, I'm not meant to say who it was. I agreed with almost all of what he was teaching, except that he's, when he came to compositions, he made a big point of making sure that nothing ever lined up with anything else. And I actually think that that if you look at a painter like Veronese, you know, look closely at his paintings. Like th there's one of Alexander, I forget the title, Alexander the Great, I think it is, um, or, or any of his big paintings, you know, mural-sized paintings. And he's, he creates these implied kind of lines that, that makes a rhythm through the composition. Arthur Wesley Doe talks about this a lot as well, uh, and in, in reference to Japanese art. Um, and that's something I try to think about as I'm painting, so that, you know, something is happening here. There's a line down here, and there's obviously the main one created between these two roses. It's like these kind of rhythms is, is perhaps the closest description you could say. I, you know, if I'm lucky enough to come up, come out with a painting that works, if I can bring some of that in and just stay kind of aware of it and sensitive to it at the start, then for me, I'm more likely to make a better painting, you know. Um, I'm going to start thinking about light and shadow colours for the roses, just in real general simple terms now. Now that I've kind of got enough environment in to see where I'm heading. You know, anything is still up for changing really at this point. I'm just going to... That down a bit as well. Need a bigger palette. I keep meaning to get a nice big sheet of glass. The thing is, this one fits nicely on the camera. <laughs> so it's quite good from that point of view as well. Probably got most of what I need in terms of colour out already for these roses. I've painted I painted one of these the other day. I think I may have let the hue swing a little bit greener than I should have gone. Um, but they are definitely a, a green yellow, especially well all the way through, but especially in the shadows. They were kind of a green yellow. So I want to mix up a general light and shadow. 
Let me show you. Actually, I can show you that study again from the stream yesterday with the threads group. So this was painted first. I, I did this the same in the same way. First painted all of the environment around it. Obviously, it's just a value study. And the reason I chose garlic as a subject is it's kind of like um, a slightly homely version of a cast <laughs> because it's all one local and it's very light. And then painted this light block and this shadow block, light block, shadow block, and then modeled into them a little bit and did some edge handling and the form just appears, you know, and I, <clears throat> it's pretty much the way I approach anything, try to think really clearly in terms of light and shadow and get those values right and the colors right. So for the light, it's like, um, it's low chroma, slightly green yellow. And I, and I want the, I want a little bit of headroom to be able to put right at the end, some small highlights in lead white. I usually put those in right at the end. So I want it to be, I don't want it to be like, the highest value I can possibly do. Go down a little bit from titanium white. Too much yellow, I think. Might have gone a bit too orange. I think it's yeah, probably okay. So that's like light. And the shadow is really key. The value is really key. Oh, hi, Barbara. Yes, I will. I will check that. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. That's so annoying when your something goes wrong with your credit card, isn't it? Someone manages to get hold of the number. Horrendous, I feel for you. I absolutely will check that for you. I'll just make a little note to myself now to check it later. Um, but don't worry. Um, if there's a problem, I won't stop your membership or anything. Just, um, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll keep it going. You can drop me an email or something. Um, but I'm making myself a note to it so I don't forget. There we go. We'll remember. Hello, Ron, from the south of France. Wow. Got nice weather there. Claudia, yeah, they, they do look a bit like peonies, these roses. You're right, David. Your knowledge of art history always astounds me. It is. It is exactly that painting. The family of Dar Darius before Alexander. And you look, at, look that up. It's in the National Gallery. And look for the pattern. It's, I firmly believe myself that um, Picasso based his, uh, in Guanica, he based uh, the way that he did all of those implied lines running through the composition on Veronese's large paintings. I think that's where he got the idea from. It's so like what Veronese does. Thanks, David. Feel free to bung a link in, David, into, into the comments if you've got one handy for that. It's a National Gallery, isn't it? I think my, the light's dropping a little bit. I'm going to bring the exposure of that camera up a little bit. It's a little bit better, hopefully. 
It's getting a nice uh, feeling about it, I think. I'm starting to feel there's something happening. Shadow colour. Thinking about the values. Now, the bit that I'm thinking about most is the relationships are... It's about the same value as the background here. And this background needs to be darker than this background here. You know, I'm always thinking about the relationships between the various areas. I think it's maybe very, very slightly darker um, than the background. It has a fair bit of chroma. The main thing that, sh that shows, the reason I've painted this like this grey here, close to neutral, is the main thing that shows the shadow side of the rose there is... Um, the difference in chroma so I'm just thinking about how far orange and far green I wanted to, it to go because it is a green yellow but as as the shadows as you go into the shadow it will the hue will go a little bit more towards orange So it's going to be almost the same. I'm just I'm, I'm looking and I'm trying to decide if I've got the value of the background right or not. I'm not 100%. I think I'm going to paint that that shadow, this shadow side of this row, slightly lower value than the background, so I want to know that my background value is going to be about right. Probably might be a little light at the moment. And it feels maybe dark, but I'm thinking in value terms, I'm thinking that I want the shadow side of the rose to be like right down, probably around here, three or four. Um, so this is how I'd be using, you know, Monsel, I'm thinking first in terms of the value where I probably want it to be like around here maybe. and. Uh, is that going to be a little bit darker than that, that background there? A lot darker. So what's that background there? Is it that value? It's about that value. So I may bring this down, which would bring, mean bringing that down, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but I think I want it to be about here. it's going to be too dark. I think in the terms of the value balance that I'm setting up, I think it, it might, it, maybe it would be too dark. But so in terms of the colour, see this is... Um, pretty sure it wants to be around here so this is sl slightly towards orange from the local color I can hold this like over the, like if I hold this, I've got a chip here and a colour, little isolated. If I hold that, like, you know, and then you can angle it until it, until it matches the value. And then you can, you know, you can get a good, it's a good way to get a judge. Like if I was judging this, 
this value here, you know, say, on the subject, obviously not on the painting, I can angle it, you know, and then it gives me a good idea of what the chroma should be in there. That does feel dark, but chroma's maybe a little high. But that's actually the lighter one. That's, let's tr I'm going to try around there. A lot depends on the value balance of the picture. You don't, um, it was a big discovery to me that you, you don't have to paint the values exactly as they are because you basically can't anyway, but you do need to keep the, the relationships consistent. If you don't, you destroy the form. Light is dropping quite a lot now. This often happens at this time of day, I'm not sure why. I'll jack up the exposure on the cameras a little bit, um, but it will tend to um, saturate the image a bit when I do that. I don't really like doing it. Only cameras work like human eyes. Make life so much easier for me, but they don't. So I'm going to get as far as putting the light and shadow colors in as in major blocks, and then I'm going to stop for a break. So um, this is raw umber. which is um, really is best thought of as a yellow, yellow orange. I'll bring that up to about the right value. Whoa, overshot. Raw umber is very uh, weak tinter, so you can easily overpower it with uh, titanium white. This is Michael Harding Green Gold. Look what happens when you put titanium white in it. The, the chroma just bangs out. It's good, probably going to end up being too green if I put these two together. I'm going to need to push it more orange, but it is quite green. don't think I want quite as much chroma as I've got there. This is sometimes, some days I mix really, really carefully and sometimes I'm a bit more, this is like a bit more of a seat of the pants day. As long as I get where I want to be. It's a bit more green. The cat wants in, huh? Hello, big lad, you all right? I know, yeah. How dare I be painting when there's, you need a pat, it's just not right, is it really? Losing my focus here. This mix is running away from me. What am I doing? I think my, my tiredness is really showing now. I'm not thinking in an organized way. I'm kind of... Uh, that's slightly lower chroma than the chip, which is I think is probably going to be about right. I have a feeling it might be too light. In, in in the context of the picture. No, I think it's okay. It's it's darker than um slightly darker than this value here, which is what I wanted. I know, yeah. 
I don't have my little cat sling ready for you. Such a demanding kitten. I think that should pretty much work as kind of shadow block for that. little too dark maybe but in the painting it's going to help this really the lights to show because I, I especially want a lot of range to be able to work you know in there uh, uh, we'll see how it goes feels like maybe it's um A bit too orange. But I want this clear separation between the light and the, and the shadow. Now this shadow block on this rose is a higher, higher value. Probably a little bit lower chroma. I'm still in shadow world, so the value is going to be low. Lower than I would think. Because underneath here is the green blue of the vase, which is going to be a lot lower in value, which will help to show those shadow up. This is not going to be a one session painting, I'm beginning to realize. Sometimes they are, this one isn't. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, I want that green blue in the vase. 
and it's a very low value. It's more of a grey actually. It's as low as the value of the, the the lowest value in the background, so it really is right down the bottom of the value range. I'm out of black. Hello Olaf, nice to see you. Yeah, I kind of like half-finished paintings as well. I kind of like to see them that way. Oh, David, thank you so much. The cat is fine, thank you. Studio cat is doing very well. <laughs> he's a bit annoyed with me because I'm not picking him up and patting him, but apart from that, he's very happy. I know, yeah. It's not right, is it? You deserve much more pats. Thank you, Anita. Ow, don't claw, please don't. I have a feeling that that That, that colour is not what it looks like. It looks like a blue... Ow! Oh, he's climbing up my leg. No, don't do that. Ow! <laughs> Stop it. Don't be climbing up my leg, all right? Ah! Now he's clawing my neck. You're going to have to go down. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let go! <laughs> Come on! I'm sorry, big fella. I can't manage you when you're not in your little sling. I'm trying to think about a colour here. <laughs> he's, he's turned his back to me, he's annoyed with me now. Yeah, this colour here, I have a feeling that it's not quite the green that it looks. Um, it's going to be mostly picking up this and some of the background. And I think a lot of it is because it's lower... Don't use that, that's my shadow brush. Because it's lower chroma, Than what's surrounding it, 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 it appears to be like a kind of a a green, but it's really a green blue, but it's really not. I don't think it is. See this darker value underneath from the bottle is is showing up this shadow here much better now. really is all about uh, relationships, making sure they're consistent. Come right, that's not, a, it's not a green blue at all. It's a greyish brown.
you the odd little hint of it in there that will make it look. That means that the cast shadow is in the wrong place. So um, the light side of the rows for which I've saved this, the I use for roses, I use a lot. This is on, I don't know if you're still here, Kathy, but um, uh, Kathleen Speranza, if you, you presumably know who she is. If you don't, you must look her up. Fantastic rose paint. Put me onto these brushes. She recommends these. She's put out a video series on rose painting, which I'm following. It's excellent so far. Uh, and these are Eclipse angled synthetics. And I usually have one for the shadow, this one, and then one for the light. And my general light, I, I start off with just a really simple kind of binary general light and shadow, um, and then we'll develop it. The, the smaller forms within that from there, but I want to know that, that, that those colors are working before I try to, um, to actually start painting a rose that looks like a rose, because if I don't get it right at the beginning, in the big shapes, then I have no chance of, of fixing it with, with detail later. It has to be right from the start. But this is the light. So anything that's in the light will be painted with this. back here I think it's more light than shadow so and I always kind of think like at this stage if the painting is going to work if I if I squint down if it's going to work it will work generally speaking in, in value terms at this point if it's if it's not working here then there's, there's, you know, something I need to sit back and think about the values and mostly probably the values. Now I know that all of this down here, this area is shadow really. This is light.
but generally this is con this whole area I'm conceiving it as as light It definitely needs to go a little bit more green. And it feels like the shadow is maybe dark. I'm really losing the light in the studio now, so I'm going to have to stop anyway. Uh, what a shame, because I've just got to the point where I start to do... I can use the brush to start describing the forms of the rows, and uh, the light has gone. Which means that this painting either won't be finished, or... Um, it will be different anyway, let's say it will be different than if I'd been able to get a bit further while I still had light. There's quite a bit of sorting out still to do in the colour of these roses. But generally speaking, I think these colours are uh, uh, will work fairly well. This is a very smooth transition across here to shadow. This is more abrupt. Definitely want that to be more green. I went to orange, I think for sure. Yeah, the light has gone. Not enough light for me to paint even now, really. So I'm going to have to, uh, I mean, you can see it. Camera, I'm bringing the exposure right up. Uh, but it never looks quite the same <laughs> as when it's, uh, you know, I'm forcing the exposure up of the camera. It never looks quite the same as when it's going properly. I'm going to have to leave the painting for now. Uh, which is kind of a shame because I, I like how, where it's going, I think. I like where the roses are sitting in the panel. I quite I like the composition. I haven't had time to bring out this diagonal coming out here, but um, I think it's kind of starting to come. Uh, what a shame because tomorrow, the last thing I want to do really is to make sure that there's, you know, there's... Tomorrow this couch will be, will be tacky and I won't be able to work into it. Um, some areas will be fairly dry over here, but I'm going to have to leave this painting probably at least a couple of days, by which time my roses will have changed. So probably my only hope of getting this one finished now, unless the, the light comes back today, 
My only real hope of finishing it is going to be to finish it from the photo. Unless you never know. I mean, the, the, the last Litchfield Angel Rose that I painted, um, actually, it did. It kept its shape for about three days. So, you know, I might be lucky. And I might be able to work on it a bit over the weekend. We'll, ju we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Um, but even if I don't get that far, it was a nice exercise to start setting up the value balance and get everything kind of working. If I, can, I think it might make a nice painting if I can get it done. <laughs> we'll have to see. We'll just have to see what happens. Mariana, that's a really, really good idea. The, actually, the rose hasn't changed, and really, I don't think it's changed that much. Um, I, I want to try and maybe sort out the sh uh, the shapes are a bit out in places like this one doesn't look quite right. I think we should be coming a bit more around here. It hasn't actually changed too much, I don't think, this one. Sometimes they do, they change a lot. This one I don't think has changed too much from when I took the... This is all out, you see. Something is out here. I'm trying to figure out exactly what it is. When I took the photo at the start, it hadn't really changed all that much. Very soft transition there. I'm, I'm, I am going to fiddle a little bit more. I always do this. I say, right, I'm going to stop now. And I think, right, what do I need to sort out before I can stop and leave this in a good place? And then I end up fiddling for like another... 20 minutes or something. I just want to make sure that I don't have, you know, because I won't be able to get these really soft transitions in quite this way again now. Once the couch is dried, I can put another couch over it, but it's never quite the same. And also in order to do that and, and not mess the thing up, you have to wait a little while. I can't put it on the next day because the surface will be too tacky. Some drawing problems. Okay. Slightly like this rose has got a bit bigger than it should be. And I want to try and fix those while everything is movable. I know, I know, you're having a hard time. Not getting the attention you deserve. Talking to the cat, by the way. Ah, just when it's starting to come. Light is actually picking up again a little bit. Just when it's starting to come. I, I like this relationship here. I think this has worked out pretty well. Between this value here in the light and... Um, this actually comes slower. Let's bring in I'm I'm also getting very tired anyway, so I think I probably need to stop now. We'll see what happens with this painting. It might I might end up doing more on it or it might have to um might never go beyond this point. I've got quite a lot of paintings that I never get round to getting back to when when I only get them to this point. But we'll see. Thanks very much for watching everyone anyway. I hope you enjoyed it. And um I hope it was useful. Put it in the fridge, but um, doesn't that get water on it? I mean, it's it's a very it's a very humid environment in the fridge. Hmm. Yes, I could I could pop the roses in the fridge. I always worry that also our fridge is so packed with, mostly with veg at the moment because we've been growing a load of veg. <laughs> the fridge is really packed with veg. 
Maybe, maybe we can. Um, anyway, I'm going to sign off now. Um, thanks for watching. I hope it was interesting at least. Uh, and I'll update you next week. We'll see. We might do... Um... Yeah, I was on about putting the painting in the fridge. Did someone put the painting in the fridge? In the freezer? Yeah, I, I kind of i am worried about that. I'm a bit worried about that. We'll see. Maybe. I'm kind of inclined to leave it in the lap of the gods to see what happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to sign off now and we'll see what we do. Okay, thanks very much, everyone, and I'll see you soon.